Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the second lesson in this Introduction to AI series. In this video, we'll be using a line trace system to change how our character moves. That said, open up your projects from the last video, and let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the editor, and in this video, we are going to continue from where we left off last time. And as a reminder, last time we set our unit to randomly move around the map, this friendly one there. We're now going to make this pawn use a line trace to determine where to go. And we're going to explore this in a couple of different ways, so let's get started with that. I want you to go to your blueprints folder, open up your AI folder, and then your AI controller. And in here, we're going to unpin this for now. We'll put it back in at the end. And we're just going to update this to 0.5 because it's just an easy number to use. So half a second on our delay. And we are going to unpin our acceptance radius for a moment and our destination. We will use these later on. So I'm just going to move them up here. And we're going to unpin this move to location for a bit. Instead... What we are going to get is a line trace by channel. So I'm going to pull off this complete on the delay and I'm going to get my line trace by channel. And let's just pop this open and go through these nodes like we did in the last one. I will say the only one that really matters from the bottom bit is maybe the draw time. And I do stress the word maybe. I'm not going to change it, but you might want to at least for debugging purposes. In terms of gameplay, it won't matter unless for some reason you want the line to show up. So, what are these nodes? Well, first off, line tracing, if you're not familiar with it, or ray casting, is it draws a line from one point to another. And that first point where it starts at is our start point. How far we want to draw the line from the start point is our end point. And then, we want to know if we hit something from between that start point and that end point. And we want to know if we hit something on a particular channel. And we determine that by our trace channel. Now you can add trace channels in your game settings by going to settings, project settings, and then updating your collision channels. So we have a few options. We have visibility and camera. We'll leave ours to visibility. Trace complex is a boolean that if selected will test against the complex collision or the mesh itself instead of the simple collision. Again, we're going to have this not set. Actors to ignore are an array of actors that are ignored even if they are hit on that channel. Draw debug is a tool that is useful for seeing our line. So typically in gameplay, if you're using line tracing, you'll have this set to none. But when you're testing things out, you might set it for one frame, which since we're on a tick, it's going to be a bit or a very short bit for duration. And duration is determined by the draw time down here or persistent. It never goes away. And ignore self is a Boolean value that checks whether or not the blueprint that is calling this line trace up should be ignored. Since we're in the AI controller, an actor that's, you know, empty, there's nothing there, we don't really need to worry about this, but we are going to leave it as false. Or, sorry, we're going to leave this as true, which means we are going to ignore the, act, the AI. If we had this in the pawn itself, so in the character itself, I would also leave it as false. Trace color is the color of the line, and trace hit color, let's say your line pat hits something, and still can go on further is the color it will be after it hits that point. Now our line's gonna be too short, typically, for us to see this blue, uh, green color, so let's not worry about it too much. So I said, the only thing we really wanna change from this so far is our draw debug. For testing purposes, we're gonna leave it for duration, so it'll appear on the screen for five seconds. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's actually do something with this. So. What we're going to do is we are going to get our controlled pawn. Now, in our last video, we set that inside of our random destination here. We are going to get from our controlled pawn its world location. So get actor location. And I'm going to just plug a reroute in here to be nice and neat. You don't need to do this at all. 
And then we are going to get the forward vector of that actor. So which way is it? What is its front? So get forward vector. Now I'm going to take the actor's location and this is where I want to start my line trace from. So I want to start where the controlled pawn is and then I want to go forward from that pawn a certain distance. So I need to get where it's currently at and I need to add a vector to this. Now I just can't plug in the forward vector here because that will be the same spot it's currently at and if I do that the line won't really draw. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by a float and it's going to be a vector by float and I'm just going to use the value of 250. I'm using 250 because that is the max distance we're going to allow the unit to run when we use this. If you pop this back open, remember 250 is our max distance. I'm going to plug that into there and this will be my end. Now, let's bring our move uh, to location back down, plug the executes into each other, and let's take our deterrent value here, so the end point, and also use that for our destination and see what happens. So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's hit play. You see it's drawing a line, and it's running straight forward. Um, I'm actually surprised he did that. He's actually supposed to stop there, but he can't run any farther forward. So apparently he bounced off the corner there, and he's stuck. He can only go in that straight line. So he can only go in the straight line because the values we're passing through here are 250 units in front of where the unit is currently at. Go there. So clearly, if you want the unit to go in a straight line, it's useful. But they're going to hit a wall, as we saw, and they're going to stop. So how do we resolve this issue? Well, what we can do is we can break this for a moment. And we're going to break this. We have some output nodes here. Of course, we know what the execute one is. The hit result here, or the out hit, is what did we hit? We don't really care about that. What we care about is, did we hit something? And this return value will say, yes, we hit something, or no, we didn't. So we're going to use a branch here for now. And if we hit something, well, we don't want him to run that direction because he can't make it there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go off the false instead. If he, hit, if he doesn't hit something, or the unit doesn't hit something, or the mannequin, or whatever you want to call it, I'm used to the RTS tutorial, which is why I'm saying unit. Then we are going to move the unit only if they do not hit something. And we'll take our random location again and plug that into our destination. Let's not worry about the acceptance radius bit for now. Let's test this out and see what happens. All right. So he's moving randomly. But notice though, there's something weird about this. There's something wrong actually. And I want to see if you can work it out. And again, he's gotten stuck. So the reason he's gotten stuck, and that's the other issue with this, is if we think about the logic here, we're saying, if you don't hit something, move. If you do hit something, don't do anything. So what we could do is we could just put a second move to location here and address it that way. But that's a bit, well, inelegant. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to break that. We are going to break this for a moment as well. We're going to move that out of the way and plug the execute back into the move to location. We have another node we can use. And if you followed my AI tutorial for the vehicle in the RTS series, you're going to recognize this node. We can do select vector. I'm not sure what a selector is. Select vector. So if this is true, pick A. If this is false, we didn't hit anything, pick B. So we're just going to plug that into our destination. I'm just going to put a reroute in here so you guys can see a little bit more clearly what I am plotting and planning. And we're just going to move that along a tiny bit. And I'm going to move that back here. So if it is false, we didn't hit anything, let's do our random location. Again, that other error that I was hinting at is going to show up again. And I want to see if you can notice what it is. Think about the first test we did and how the unit moved there. Before it hit a wall, that is. All right. We are going to take 
a, another measurement at this point as well to handle what to do if we do hit something. So I'm gonna pull off this reroute on our controlled pawn and I'm going to get actor right vector. And I am going to multiply this by a float. So vector times float. And I'm just gonna pull off of this and I'm gonna pick a random float in range. So random float in range. And I'm going to set it between minus 500 and 500. I am going to take this value and I'm going to add it to the actor's location at the time, not the forward vector. So I'm gonna take that location that it's currently at and I'm gonna add it to our new right vector that we've calculated here. And I'm gonna pass that into our A. So if we hit an object, we'll pick a random number between negative 500 and 500. We'll add that to the right vector and then we'll, we'll multiply that to the right vector and then we'll add that vector to our current location and move there instead. Now, if you want to spend ages walking through this to find that bug, go for it. I think the easier way to do this is to look at what's happening here. So, let's see for him to hit an object. He hit an object and he turned, but that wasn't helpful there. He hit an object and he turned. He hit an object, he hit the object again, he turned. It's a little bit harder to see, but think about it still what we saw at the start. He isn't actually following the paths he's setting for himself. He is, also he's ignoring me because I'm, um, yeah. So he isn't following that line. So it's a bit not what we want. Also, you'll notice some other stuff when we clean this up. So what's happening is we're saying get a random destination instead of getting that random destination earlier. This line traces, is anything in front of me? No. Well, I'm gonna pick a random destination. Ignoring the fact that I'm not actually checking what that random destination is. So we're gonna remove our get random destination. And instead, what we're going to do is we are going to take its forward vector again and plug that into B. So now, or not forward vector, but it's end line. So where is it at? Add in 250 from the current forward vector and move that direction if we hit something. Sorry, if we've not hit something. And now when we hit play, he moves down the line, he hits something, he turns, and there we go, he keeps going. Oh, well, he's behaving better than my test AI did. My test AI had a slight issue. He'll turn left, and he's only gonna do left turns, I bet now. My test AI was only doing right turns. So the reason why he's pausing here, by the way, is he's getting a value that's probably too small for him to turn. There we go, he's actually finally turned right. So you can start to see, we can actually set up patrol paths this way. I honestly wouldn't do it this way. I would use um, either nav points or other things for him to follow. But this does give you a rough idea if you wanted him to follow a set path around an area. So for example, let's just set this to 250. So it's a positive number by 500. He's always gonna turn right now. So boom, keeps going. He's gonna turn right when he hits that wall. He's gonna hit that wall and turn right. Or if you just use a, say, let's make this 500 here again. Again, we'll only turn right, but it'll be a consistent right each time. There we go. So you can do a lot to change how these units will move. And as we're seeing now, I'm just gonna set that back to the original value, our units are moving in a more controlled way. So we have a bit more flexibility, might be a little bit less lifelike because someone ran randomly wandering, but it's now detecting, can it get there and making a decision? Yes, I can get there. No, I can't get there. Actually reverse it, that's yes, I can get there. No, I can't get there. I need to change directions. So let's just plug this all back in so we're up to our original form. And 
you know, that takes us through our line trace and moving our character. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll set up our enemy AI and we'll begin exploring how our enemy AI will respond to this unit from starting to chase it to patrolling for it and making small decisions on what to do with regards to our friendly unit over there. Our enemy AI will ignore us, but we could even apply it to respond to our witness character instead. There's a lot of line chases over there. All right, that said, again, this video was sponsored by my Patreon supporters who voted for a topic on an introduction to AI systems, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to help support this channel, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. That way, you also can have a vote on what topics we next cover. Also, I do have a Discord community that is open to anybody wanting to learn more about UE4 and who's having any troubles on any of the other tutorial series I host who are looking for help. It's also just a fun community to hang out in. That said, if you've liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. It lets me know I'm bringing you content that you appreciate and enjoy, and it helps this channel out. And if you want to make sure you're here for the next tutorial on setting up our enemy AI, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, or sorry, the subscribe and notify icon down, down below so you know when that video is out. And as always, I hope to see you in the next tutorial and that you have a wonderful day.